Okay, so um, I'm looking at the clinch entry um, moments in the second uh, Slumart versus Nampon fight. Um, I found this really, really interesting. There, there's a new um, remastered copy of this on YouTube uh, at Moy OG, and I was able to grab the fight and take out just these these moments where Nampon, who's a well-known um, Muay Cal fighter who is going to come in for the clinch against um, Samart, who generally likes to be more of an outfighter. Um, Samart is coming off of, in, he's in his return to Muay Thai after his WBC World um, Championship um, fairly brief boxing career. Um, and so looking at this fight, you'd be waiting to see how Samar is going to handle Nampon's uh, clinch. So what I did was um, I isolated these moments and it's really, really interesting because Samart, this is basically about how Samart attacks the and controls the groin area of um, Nampon, and it, it's absolutely incredible defensive counterfighting knee technique. Some art known for his hands, but this is actually his knees, um, and it's really, really beautiful. So I hope you enjoy it. So I'm just going to uh, scroll through this. The first, this is taken from the third round, I think, uh, and it goes rounds three through four. The first is just a, a, a big clash here. Um, point of contact right on the hip. Uh, you can see that Mampon's uh, roop is distorted. Um, this isn't a damage thing, but this first uh, engagement shows the kind of like, um, that what Samar is going to do is meet Nampon in the middle. But what he's going to do is he's actually going to start attacking Nampon's groin. Um, running the like legal, dirty fighting edge of the edges of the cup. Um, so it's actually an incredible technical attack on the center point of a Muay Cal fighter's entry. And uh, this will be a big part of the thing. Uh, these um, Silipatai teaches this in the library. Um, but this leg bar across the lap um, of the Muay Cal fighter is going to be a big part of what Samart is doing. Um, as you can see here by the blue, um, Nampon's roop is being distorted, um, and Samart has got it, this verticality that um, looks much stronger. This is in Muay Thai scoring. This is a really big deal. So we're going to run through these. This is that leg bar. Again, you see this here, the leg bar across the lap down to the thigh, but this is really going to be interesting. This knee point, he's going to continually find this knee point up around the cup, edges of the cup, up into the lower abdomen. He's going to be attacking and controlling this entire zone of nampons, and he's going to uh, walk away with the fight. Again, this horizontal, well, it's kind of a, a diagonal, a control of his open side. Again, the knee point up near the edge of the cup. These are just some visual notes I took. You can see this, the roop of uh, some art and the diagonal barring uh, of the thighs. Basically, in from this position, he's keeping Nampon from being able to knee him at all. Next entry. Here you have this, this spear point. It's gonna be a big part of what some art's doing. What someone's going to really be doing a lot of the time, he's going to start his engagement with a spear point 
meant to go right into the center, right towards the cup. Um, and then he flexes out and controls the hip or the lap. Here's that horizontal, that horizontal, it's beautiful horizontal form. Gets right into the, um, the thigh and the hip joint here. This is a really good defensive place to be to stop that knee. Do a little washing back and forth. Very beautiful. The next one. Uh, here Nampon is coming with his own centrally focused spearing lead knee. He's already sensing that this battle over the groin is going to be a, a determining one and he's leading with his spearing knee uh, to kind of ward, to pre-ward what Samart is going to do. Samart just goes straight Look at this, past it, right up the middle, and hits that joint. It's like lower abdomen, that joint. So he, some artist actually just like beautifully going right up and through that warding leg. Like a lot of accuracy here. And then, even though some art is leaning back, this is just a beautiful line of roop, which kind of, a, it's a kind of dynamic lean, which creates this like swooping, spearing knee flow. Because he's doing this defensively, this actually makes his spearing knee very visible. Next knee's coming up. He misses with this uh, central knee, uh, uh, Samart does, but it's kind of cool. Again, spearing knee aimed right at the top of the cup. It's just beautiful form. He's got this, he's already got this crossbar. He spears towards the center of the groin and then has this crossbar that's meant to go right across the lap. And here he uses it to control the opposite uh, part of the lap. It's very beautiful. I kind of like this too. Here you can see he's putting the kneecap right on the joint here. But as action unfolds, he actually starts to like move the knee into the top of the cup in the groin a little bit. He really wants to take out the core, the center of uh, uh, Nampon's roop. You can hear he's like moving over it to the top of the um, hip, uh, right under the hip bone. Because if you can take that central cup area and start forcing it back, um, you're basically deforming the roof of a Muay Thai fighter. Here you can see right at the top of the cup or the very bottom of the abdomen. See, this is not illegal, but he is uh, using this kind of like knee on groin. You see how it distorts uh, Nampon's roof a little bit, puts his butt back. Look at this. Right there. This is very, very technical stuff. Like accurate controlling. Oh, and this is great too. Here, he simply, uh, Shamu Pet in the library teaches this, who has been an opponent of uh, Samart. He puts his leg right through the legs of um, 
and pawn and puts the shin up on the groin. This is just like groin work. Attack and control the groin. Next, next engagement. Boom. This is actually, a, I think, a really important and kind of subtle uh, point of everything we're gonna be looking at. Here's some art, just takes a full on groin shot to Nampon. Now, he's a super accurate fighter. I'm gonna say he's so cagey that he just nails the groin with the knee, which is a foul, I believe, uh, back in the golden age. The reason why you would take a groin shot here is this, in, this actually, sends a visceral message to the area of the opponent's body where you're going to be doing all your work. And while judges might note it as a foul, uh, referees at this time are not gonna be giving the demonstrative uh, warnings or anything like that. Nampon is like, hey dude, that's unsportsmanlike. But, the actual message has already been sent. And Nampon doesn't take five minutes to walk around the ring. He literally takes like five seconds. Next engagement. I think that's a very important groin strike though. It adds a uh, memory fuel to everything you're gonna be doing around the groin. The groin. Here's awarding knee to the hip bone, thigh coming down, I mean the, the shin coming across. Already, Nampon's hip is slightly back. This is what he wants. He wants this. He wants to distort Nampon. It's beautiful. Uh, shielding knee, um, shin, across both thighs. Look at this. Between the legs, as Chumung Pet teaches in the library. Control of the arms. This vertical line in uh, Summer's body. Here now Pawn tries to like actually just shove his groin forward, countering this kind of like war of the groin that uh, some art is kind of like um, attacking him. He's like refusing. This is actually kind of a beautiful root moment. He's like, quit fucking trying to drive my groin back. Again, and upon trying to create this shielding knee to counter these spearing knees right up towards his groin. Boom. Seeing this as a pattern that what uh, Samart does is he spears straight at the groin um, going towards the edge of the cup and then uh, creates a horizontal move. He slides off into a horizontal move. Here's a straight block, cross block of that uh, uh, anticipated knee. Here's uh, Nampon walking forward. Look at this. Again, Nampon with that forward knee. Samart just goes up around it, but not wide. Right up into the lower abdomen. Look at this roop here. So like Som Chai masculine. Next 
next one up. And then Pawn comes with the other shielding leg, his left leg. He's been using his right one as his lead. So Mark just goes to the other side, right on the hip bone, I think uh, into the uh, elbow of um, Nampon. Look at this beautiful shape. Look at this beautiful group. Some art is gaining like uh, root points, posture points. This is, Yokum Pon teaches this in the library. You start with the knee outside, your foot points outside, but it comes straight, it whips, kind of curves into the center. And here, you have, you have him once again, I mean, this might even be a groin strike almost, like a, the top of the cup. See how he's come, and then look at Nampon being distorted by it. And he just swipes across the cup into his horizontal pin. And then, oh, and then he just reverses himself. Look at that. Boom. And then reverses himself to, because the other knee is coming. You can't get all the way into that um, over, over the hip point. So he's just having a spearing knee uh, towards the thigh. Again, right up into the groin. Look at this. Look how much he's extended Nampon and basically taken, use the groin area to basically destroy his Moi Kao entry. Nampon has a kick, caught kick by um, Samart. right into the lower abdomen. Look at this laid out posture extension. And look at um, Nampon's broken root, but from the attack point right above the cup. Next engagement. Starting with that same principle, knee right to the groin, but he's not hitting him in the groin. He is basically uh, blocking, he's literally cock blocking. He's blocking the groin with the knee point, threatening. I mean, there's always the veiled threat that I could knee you in the groin, unconscious threat. And then the horizontal extension of it, which keeps it from being a spearing knee um, it's very, very beautiful. Here you have uh, Nampong coming with that shielding knee. Some art just likes to go right around it. He's not able to get quite to the center of the body this time, but he gets a great shot on the hip bone. He'd rather go right to the center, right like up on the abdomen, but not bad at all. You can see how distorted Nampon's uh, roof is. Next to entry. These are just really subtle, beautiful things. Here's this bent knee uh, leg bar. And then he turns it over. Again, this is right on the top of the cup, lower part of the abdomen. 
with this defensive, when you turn that hip like that and you keep this foot out and you kind of like pull the, the knee kind of, it's like a heat seeking missile towards the center of the body. You also have this defensive um, appendage to it because your shin is like here and this knee can't counter knee. It's simultaneously um, offense and defense. And then look, he switches to the other side because he's like, I'm, I'm concerned like the next knee is gonna come on the other side and he just, his little foot placement here, hooking the back of the knee. Okay, next engagement. Here he beats Nampon. He gets to the inside of Nampon with his knee. And look how he's driving it. Here's the knee point, the foot, the shoulder, but look at this roop. Very dynamic. He uses this lean back, not only defensively, but also to create this like dynamic visual of his his knees being thrown forward, his defensive knees throwing, being thrown forward. It creates a sense of impact. Even here, he's like, he's actually pretty much off balance, but taken all together, it just creates a like, dynamic, thrown forward, chan kind of uh, energy, like visual energy. You're scoring visual points. You have to keep in mind that Pawn is a Moy Cao Dern fighter, so everybody in the fight, the rounds one and two are pretty close, are waiting for Nam Pawn to come, and this is um, some art's answer. Um, in the fight before this, uh, there was very bloody, Nam Pawn was cut by um, some art. Um, Arjun Pramot tells us that Nam Pawn actually got cut five days before the fight and had, uh, had stitches and they took us just out for the fight. So um, now Palm was coming for revenge. Um, he kind of um, fought the other fight. He got a very famous photo of just being drenched in blood as if he had been like shredded by uh, some art and it really affected his uh, reputation as a fighter also. Got the nickname Soft Face, like that would be well, easily cut, but um, he was actually cut according to his crew, his uh, crew, Arjun Promote, uh, he was cut coming into that fight. So this is the aftermath and they're waiting for Nampon to like basically come and clinch up um, some art. You can see the posture. But even here coming off the blow, this beautiful, this is a continual threat right at above the cup, right at the edge of the cup or the lower abdomen, which isn't very strong. Just by keeping that, that knee there. I mean, you basically are, you're putting a, a knee on the groin and then you have this, but you're not doing something. It, you're, by creating this secondary angle, you're always saying that you're really, what you're doing is you're creating this defensive shield. Here is another one. Nampon coming and he keeps coming with his right leg in advance and he keeps trying to cross check this because some art keeps trying to get around it and look how far Nampon is trying to like cross check this in anticipation of what's happening. Again, this some art is able to go around this knee. This is the this is an old school knee technique that Yokompon talks about in the Muay Thai library. This kind of like, you start wide, but actually you heat seek in. Nampon was able to kind of like shield that and defend himself a little bit, but the technique is beautiful. Next engagement. Again, he's coming with this cross check. Summer's gonna do his thing, just heat seek right around it. Again, right at the top of the cup, the lower abdomen. 
And I think that groin strike actually just added to the threat of all of these very close edge shots. It's very consistent. Like, this is beautiful, this folded, look at this folded guard, just shuts out both legs. So beautiful. Boom. You know, I noted this posture. You can just look at this line that comes through here. Boom. This full, beautiful lean back. You can see how the lean back creates this spearing kind of like aesthetic. I mean, actually, you know, so as he does this, you can see that he actually puts himself in a kind of like compromised position. I mean, this is not a strong position. He's sold out on this and a different fighter might have been able to cause problems for this deep spearing action. But he's telling a story, how he's submarining and controlling that kind of lower abdomen groin area. And it's just like, um, what ended up happening in the fight was that Nampon became extremely frustrated and was, I think, psychologically defeated by this submarining kind of control the groin attack of some arts. Um, and all the while, Sumart, because he's very good at gamesmanship, just played this all off on, you're nothing to me, I don't really, I'm not concerned with you in any kind of way. And it's just like, um, blew a, a fight out, uh, almost psychologically and stylistically. Um, especially when Nampon's heart uh, gave out in the fight, uh, there was no way to come back because some art's game, his femur game, is basically nothing you can do even touches me. I am practically laughing at it. Um, and you can see in watching uh, some of his other fights that he's lost, when he starts to play that game, he'll play it even when he has no chance in the fight, like against Diesel Noy or um, uh, Wong Chinoy. In this fight, this submarining action, these techniques, these beautiful techniques, were just like um, a technical control and aesthetic uh, mastery of the central core of a Muay Cal fighter. Uh, really beautiful stuff. I hope you'd enjoy you enjoyed that. But he doesn't want to be clinched, so he wants to nullify it and then score by dominant position. So I'm like, if your opponent is coming towards you, you never grab first. Yeah. He's like, no, I don't want to grab my opponent. I just want to nullify. Look at how he's gonna stay on one leg. This is bullshit, guys. Like, I should fully be able to like throw him down with his leg up in the air like that, and I can't do it. Can you walk Because he keeps his leg too far away from me, so I have to reach too far to get to his standing leg. And now I'm trying to get to the outside, like around his knee, and I can't, I can't get over because he's keeping my upper body in place with his arms. Yeah, I'm caught. How much? So when he fought some core, he so every time basically just all the time. I'm caught. We like some core trying to like climb over him. No good. Me, and then once he's distracted by me blocking his. Legs, I can elbow. He's tucking my toe into his shorts. He's showing me how you can actually, <laughs> it's not cheating, it's not a foul, but you can tuck your toe into someone's shorts and kind of like pull them down a little bit. <laughs> Just a little trick. But what he had showed me earlier is that you really tuck your shin into their groin, like into the side of their groin and you can completely control the leg like from the stem basically by really tucking it in there. So see I'm blocking his knee and then switching my legs and landing that uh, knee into his solar plexus.
ถ้าถ้าถ้าที่นี่นี่ไม่ได้ส่ง